Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday the 19th of January. It's Epiphany and it's good to be with you this morning. I hope you're keeping well wherever you are. Our service is taken from the Book of Alternative Services for the Anglican Church of Canada. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 38. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh, because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me. Like a heavy burden, they are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go about in mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am utterly numb and crushed. I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me, and the brightness of my eyes have gone from me. My friends and companions draw back from my affliction, and my neighbors stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin, and plot treachery all day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I have become like one who does not hear, and from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord, my God. For I say, do not let them rejoice at my expense, those who gloat over me when my foot slips. Truly I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty, and many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me, because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me. O Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading for this morning is from the Hebrew to the church, um, he Hebrews 11, chapter 6, verse 1 to 12. Therefore let us go on towards perfection, leaving behind the basic teachings about Christ, and not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works, and faith towards God, instruction about baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits, for it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened, and have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God, and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, since on their own they are crucifying again the Son of God, and are holding him up to contempt. Ground that drinks up the rain, falling on it repeatedly, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless, and on the verge of being cursed. Its end is to be burned away, over. Even though we speak in this way, beloved, we are confident of better things in your case, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust. He will not overlook your work and the love that you have showed for his sake in serving the saints, as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence, so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning is taken from John's gospel, reading from chapter 3, verse 22 to 36. 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Aenon near Salim, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, did not yet had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and the Jews. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan to whom you testified, here he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, no one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not, not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who, was the who is the bride is the bride. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is on earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God speak, sp sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The letter of Hebrews is probably a sermon redrafted as a letter and sent out to Christians in general. While it has been ascribed to Paul, there were already questions about its authority or authorship by the third century with suggestions about whether there's a sermon by Paul in Hebrew that was translated into Greek, or probably a sermon by Apollos or Priscilla redrafted for redistribution. What is clear is that follows a particular logic that is reinforced throughout the text as it draws on images, symbols, and metaphors from the Hebrew scriptures and reinterprets these as being fulfilled in the person of Christ. In fact, the portion we read this morning fits into a whole section from Hebrews 4, verse 14, to Hebrews 10, verse 31, that deals with Jesus as the eternal high priest against the backdrop of the Israelites' priesthood. But in doing so, it fits into a key pastoral issue addressed in the letter of those who fall away from faith due to suffering. In fact, Hebrews 4, 1 sets that pastoral context for us. Therefore, while the promise of eternal, eternal entering his rest is still open, let us take care that none of you should seem to have failed to reach it. As reinforced in Hebrews 6.1 that we read this morning. Therefore, let us go on towards perfection, leaving behind the basic teachings about Christ and not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith towards God, instruction about baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. The letter is intended as a source of encouragement, not judgment, and we need to take care in reading it in not assuming there's some perfect standard of faith that is required of us. The whole point of the letter is to encourage us to seek faith and to know grace in order that we may be faithful and grow into the fullness that Christ has called us to. The end goal is that we may enter the rest promised to us in Christ, and grow in perfection. And that word perfection is telelotita in the Greek and is a noun that is active in the active future tense. Describe a singular individual. It can't, could be translated as maturity to describe a state of being in the future. Christian theology has that distinction in it of doing and being. The doing in, this, in these verses is phrases like dead works to indicate our salvation does not rest on our effort to please God. 
in contrast to entering into rest and go on towards perfection or maturity to indicate us entering into a particular state of being because of the grace of God working through us. It is almost as if the writer wants to assure the readers that their faith is not up for grabs in verse 9 and 11. Even though we speak in this way, beloved, we are confident of better things in your case, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust. He will not overlook your work and the love that you show for his sake in serving the saints, as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who, through faith and patience, inherited the promises. Those better things in your case are linked to those things that belong to salvation, as it relates to a just God who does not overlook our effort and our love. The point is to encourage them, and therefore us, to remain diligent and not to become sluggish, but rather to be imitators of those who have proved faithful. In the midst of suffering, it's all too easy for us to give up or to feel berated or get belittled or guilty, when in fact all we need is to be encouraged to keep going and to find ways our faith might grow into maturity in the midst of life's circumstances. Part of that encouragement is taken from the faith of others, those who we can imitate while we work out how to be diligent in and of ourselves. My hope in prayer in this epiphany is that while we struggle yet through another wave of COVID, that we might find our faith strengthened and that we might continue to grow into maturity and to full till we find our true rest in Christ. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. For our intercessions this morning, we're using Litany 18. It's a responsive intercession. And if you have the bulletin, I'd invite you to join me. In peace we pray to our Lord God. We pray for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends and neighbours, and all those who are alone. We pray for this community, our country and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom and peace. We pray for the just and proper use of God's creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice and oppression. We pray for all who are in danger, sorrow or any other kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless and the needy. We pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the Gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray for Andrew, our Bishop, and Rosilla, our area bishop, and all other bishops and ministers. For all who have served God in God's church, we pray for our own needs and those of others. We lift before God those who have requested our prayers, those who are on our parish prayer lists, those who have indicated their need. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name for ever and ever. We pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray too, you also may forgive us for our sins. Have mercy upon us, merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of love to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our request as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Somebody had sent in a notice on our YouTube channel to request when uh, churches would be open again. Um, at present, we have no idea. <laughs> We're shut at least until the end of January, and then the College of Bishops will make a decision as to how we proceed from there. We have yet uh, not heard anything from them, um, and uh, we will persist uh, in our services as they are online for the foreseeable future. Hopefully, um, this pandemic will reach a peak at some point, it clearly hasn't yet, and uh, we'll be on the downside of that, uh, and therefore able to open up again. There are a couple of things that uh, you need to be aware of. Firstly, um, we do daily devotions. There are a team of writers from Good Shepherd, St. Margaret, and Trinity, who write a daily devotion that's posted um, online. It can be sent to you by email, or you can access through our parish websites. Um, or well, you can contact Norm Saville at nsavill at bell.net uh, to be included um, on that posting. And uh, they really are well written and uh, I think a, a wonderful way of engaging our faith on a daily basis. We're presently sharing our services between St. Margaret's and Trinity until we go back into in-person worship. So you'll notice on Wednesdays we're here at St. Margaret's and on Sundays uh, we're at Trinity, videoing at Trinity. And uh, this takes a fair amount of work on our part to keep this going, um, but it's a very important ministry. And so we want to thank folk for their support and care in supporting this um, as we go forward. Just a reminder that we have vestry coming up in February. Uh, Trinity's vestry will be on the 13th of February at 12 o'clock uh, via Zoom. And St. Margaret's vestry will be on the 28th of February at 12 o'clock. And we are not sure whether it will be a blended uh, uh, one with Zoom and in person. And that really is dependent upon whether we open up or not. And then Shrove Tuesday is the 2nd of March and Ash Wednesday is the 3rd of March. And we're hoping that we will have some liturgical life by then in order to participate together. Clearly we will not be able to serve food on Shrove Tuesday, but we, have, we were quite creative last year um, in having an online Shrove Tuesday uh, together via Zoom. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.